It's the Christmas season at the Miller House, and the boys are excited for Christmas. But today we're going to be making a French dish Boof? for the Thousand Food family. Bouf bourguignon. Bouf bourguignon. What is that, Miles? Like a stew? It's a soup. It's like a stew, a, a French meat stew. All right, let's get started. This I really remember from the Julie and Julia movie, which I loved. Um, and the recipe we are using is right out of our book. A thousand foods to eat before you die, right? So this is the recipe that um, Mimi Sheridan listed and I'm following it to the T. So I've got about two and a half pounds of uh, lean stew meat. I went a little bit um, easy and bought the already cubed because it looked really nice when I was in the store. And then it saved me a step because we wanted to keep it about one inch cubed. So I'm just going to be putting this in a bowl. It said glass or metal, so it must be because of the, you know, you don't want to be like reacting weirdly to the ingredients. I'm gonna, it's a little bit just kind of cool. So we're going to be marinating this overnight and the recipe says six to seven hours in the refrigerator or three to four hours on the counter and because we're going to have it tomorrow afternoon we decided to go ahead and go for marinating it tonight so yes we're just it's all going in we've got coarsely chopped onion some sprigs of flat leaf parsley bay leaf some crushed peppercorn. This is thyme actually from my own little herb garden and um, kind of smashed garlic. And then we have a wine. So the recipe says, good but not extravagant, red burgundy or Cote Sterone. Might not be saying that right. But I got this from Trader Joe's and the Trader Joe's wine buyers don't buy anything bad. So this was like, probably about eight dollars and i feel really good about it and i did take a little taste and yeah it's good so <laughs> it says to take the beef and then to pour enough wine to cover it so it said a cup to two whoops i'm dribbling a little bit a cup i might actually need a little bit more just kind of depends on like the depth of your bowl. So that's probably pretty good. And then pretty much everything else is going in. And we're gonna cover this and put it into the fridge. All right. I'm so gonna use this so that I don't lose any good bits because my hands are a little bit wet. So that put works. Put that in the fridge and we'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. All right, so that uh, meat's been marinating, and what are you getting up to, Nicole? Oh boy, well, we're going to start with some diced bacon. And we're going to be grilling it in our Le Creuset. That's not Le Creuset. Oh, uh, what is it? <laughs> that one, I think it's uh, Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, our Better Homes and Gardens, just like that BHG. You should get that Le Creuset <laughs> one out. But we're going to be doing it in that pot. What kind of pot is that? It's a Dutch oven. In the Dutch oven. Enamel-coated, heavy Dutch oven. All right, so you got, like, what, three slices of bacon? Two slices of bacon. Um, I'm also going to need to... I've never peeled a pearl onion. I don't think that's going to be fun. But we have to use ten of these. Last time we needed these, I think it was for the coca bean, and I bought frozen because I didn't see fresh. So anyhow, we're gonna peel these. We got some steps to go through. All right, our bacon is browned, and uh, seven minutes later, Nicole's still working on those well, little guys. I found 
a bit of a faster way, I think, as I went along. But yeah, this will be the last one. And this one I'm not doing very good. So we've transferred the bacon over to a towel to drain, but we've got that. We put uh, two tablespoons of olive oil to cook the bacon because in French cooking, bacon on its own is not enough. We gotta add extra oil. Um, but we're gonna put those little baby pearls in here. And we're going to cook those for about five minutes till they're brown on all sides. So while the onions are cooking, Nicole is removing the beef from our marinade. Yes, we are going to um, pat this dry. The next big step is going to be to brown the meat, and we're going to have to do that in stages. All right, you're going to strain that marinade. Yep. What are you going to do with those chunks? Just throw it yeah, out. Yeah, this is, we're not going to use this. You can see though, down here, two cups. I put more than that. I put almost that whole bottle. So it's all soaked up in the beef. It's going to be really delicious. And then still browning. Yes, our lovely dried I'm going to have to change my shirt. Actually, I need the longer tongs. There we go. Um, we're not going to crowd this and then tuck over the sizzle. We want it to brown the meat on all sides. We're not cooking it because it's going to go in the stew, but we want to get that caramelization, kind of that color on, on all the pieces. So we're going to do it in stages. We're not crowding. We're going to be taking them out and putting them in a bowl. Yep. That's a mistake I've made before. Trying to brown something when there was too much, not enough surface area for it to really get that hot, hot heat. Okay, all of our beef has now been browned. We've returned it all back to the pot. Is this where we season it with salt and pepper? Yes, sorry, I was looking at something. Yes, we're gonna it's it says season to taste, but like you're not gonna taste it right now, so we'll just be a bit liberal with that. Since it wasn't, there was no salt in the marinade at all. Okay, and we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. And we're going to stir this, right, for about, yeah. Slowly but constantly. Okay. This is gonna thicken up everything. Well, the flour has made a nice gravy over that boof. Now, what are we gonna I'm add, over Nicole? Over here, peeling more stuff. I'm doing my shallots. This is a brandy, and I don't think it's like up high enough to really. Wait, you turned the heat off? No, it's supposed to be on low. It's off. We're killing ourselves. All right. We're gonna. Let that simmer until the alcohol burns off. We want these brown bits to come up. That's what we're after. It's not even simmering. Oh, dang, guys, if you could only smell. This smells so delicious. Wow. It does. So, the shallots, this is new to me. It says crushed the chef's knife so I'm doing that to them I don't know if we're gonna take them out later or what but these are pretty big shallots <laughs> is that crushed enough no, get your anger out on your shallots okay that's messy we have the reserved marinade going back in it's been strained all that Lovely flavor. We have one cup of beef broth. We have our 
smashed shallots. Make sure we get all that. And we have, oh, we have a mess over here. A tablespoon of thyme, two sprigs of parsley. The clock on wine. And where's my peel? Time after time. All right, and Which then we'll peel? open up the un oh. oven. We have been drying an orange peel at 325 degrees. Here it is. Fragrant. All right, that's going the on. The new thing for me. <laughs> Go ahead and. All right, so we'll see people back here in about two hours. We want this to be simmering. Okay, yep. Right, guys it looks like we're all finished we're about getting ready to serve it um, I've got some finishing salt from France sell gris from the Oregon uh, company the Jacobs and salt company so we're gonna finish it off there and we'll see you at the table all right Go for looking it. pretty good what do you think oh, wow. Elliot um looks good looks good i don't know the flavor all right elliot's first bite he is a lover of steak you do know that it's not as tough as steak it just falls into your mouth and like falls easily very tender mm -hmm. you like the sauce mm, a little bit <sighs> Pretty good? <laughs> yeah. All right, something Elliot likes. We do know he likes eggnog. Look at Miles Mustard. Bite. All right, first bite. Pretty good. Thumbs up. I had a hunch. I had a hunch. Good, good. He said if he had a hundred heads, they would all be saying good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Used to be a thousand heads, but now it's a hundred. All right, guys. What's your final thoughts for beef bourguignon? Um, it was good, not, but it wasn't like like any type of steak. It was a little tender. It wasn't like that. Like a normal steak that like tough it wasn't that tough. It was like easily to like crumble with your teeth. It was pretty good. So I thought it was really good. Um, it's beef stew, uh, but you know, the best beef stew you can have. And I really liked the pearl onions. I thought those were very sweet and I liked the, the roast on them. Um, so our video is a little different this time. Usually we see us eating a lot, but we had dinner with friends and we've still been trying to figure out um, how to enjoy the meal and still make the video. But um, yeah, this was a good, uh, a good thing to make, but I think it takes a lot of prep work and a lot of time for what you do get. I, so I think this is a really good restaurant food that, you know, something to order at a restaurant that you don't have to take the time to make yourself. That's my thought. So I thought it turned out really good. I was a little bit disappointed that the meat wasn't quite as fork tender as I had seen in some videos. I think we might have rushed the last cooking time because we, um, yeah, we were ready to sit down with our friends. So, um, I agree with what Jason said. I really like the mushrooms and the onions. Um, it wasn't that pretty of a dish. I think uh, it's m more homey. And I think if you are gonna be home all day and you don't mind kind of babysitting it and doing those steps, it's worth it because you do get a lot of depth of flavor. All right, so that's beef bourguignon. You can watch other of our videos um, on our YouTube channel. We are eating our way through this book, Thousand Foods to Eat Before You Die. Please like or subscribe. And we love the comments that people leave for us. Um, and we'll see you next time. We'll take you out on this 
huge puzzle that Elliot is starting, a thousand piece puzzle for the thousand food family.